Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to Atlantic Fleet. And this is basically a turn-based naval strategy war game. And it's made by a small company, independent company called Killerfish. And you can get this game on Steam for £7 or you can go directly, directly to killerfish.com and get it directly from them. Uh, <coughs> basically that's all there is to it. It's turn based, as I said, and the models in the game are. I mean, basically, for me, this is a, this is a direct descendant of a game called Fighting Steel, which I used to play years ago. Unfortunately, it won't run on modern operating systems. So I heard about Atlantic Fleet, and so I got it. So here it is. Great introduction. Um, <coughs> Okay, basically there are a number of ways to play the game. There is... Well, this is the options panel, obviously. You can have Battle of the Atlantic. You can have a standard campaign which takes you through a series of missions. Or you can have a full control of your fleet. Or fleets. On a strategic map. And that is in the campaign called Battle of the Atlantic. There is also single, obviously single battles as well. Sing of Courageous, Battle of the River Plate, Sing of the Glowworm, and it's about 30. So there's, yeah, there's exactly 30 single battles you can play. Yeah, didn't know you could do that. I've not played this for very long. I just got used to the training missions. And training missions are here. Introduction, movement, gunnery, torpedoes, land-based aircraft, <coughs> carry-based aircraft, and submarine warfare. You actually can actually have submarines in this game as well. It's not just surface warfare. You can have aircraft, aircraft carriers, land-based aircraft, and submarines as well. Okay, so you can have single battle, campaign. Now, the campaign basically you can play either Royal Navy or German, Kriegsmarine, or the Battle of the Atlantic. Now, I'm going to click Battle of the Atlantic. And you can either go with a set uh, variation of, sh of ship starting vessels, <coughs> or you can purchase your own. Purchase your own starting ships. So you can do whatever you really want. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose my own ships. Now you have Renown, which you have a set amount that you start with 380,000. You have a maximum of 30 ships in, in your fleet, and I believe it's about 10 ships limited in each battle on either side. So each ship is renowned. As you win engagement, sink more ships, you are rewarded with more renowned points to spend on ships. So in Battle of the Atlantic, um, battleships are quite useful, but not fantastically useful. So I'm going to go with, we have Revenge of the Nelson class. 75,500 now let's see what the other ones the revenge class was an older class of battleship very similar to the Queen Elizabeth but didn't receive the same upgrades during the 1930s so I'm going to go with shall I buy a battleship I don't know I'd rather have cruisers Especially when it comes to chasing down enemy cruisers, raiders, things like that. So I don't know. It's probably the longest video without any action in it, but never mind. Do I have War, Spike, Valiant, or Bar Malaya? I'm gonna have War, Spike. I've got to have War, Spike. 
So that's one. So I'm not to 318,000 me now. I'm not gonna take any revenge. I think one battleship head of the fleet. Maybe a Nelson class? Maybe Rodney? Yeah, we're getting Rodney. Of course, having old battleships isn't a really good idea. You have to have a variation. Okay, so I think that's it for the heavy stuff. And some of the classes of ships you're limited as to when you can actually get them. So this one is North Carolina, available week 1.5. So it works in 0.5 a week, so it's half a week. So that's basically eight turns for each half a week. So it's half a week per turn. So it's eight turns per month. Can't get that one, obviously. Lion class is 1942. Renowned class battle grozer. I think we'll get two of those. We get two battle cruisers. It's got two battleships and two battle cruisers. Mm, hold. No, I don't think so. Not yet. I might get that later on. No, it's also very useful. Is probably aircraft. So I think I'm going to get. At least one aircraft carrier. Maybe I should have waited and got this one instead. I need to look right through the list. Damn. Never mind. Same, same number of aircraft. 40 aircraft. Same, well, slightly faster. Half a knot faster. How do you measure half a knot? No idea. But more armour. Yeah. Never mind. The escort carriers for the Bug, which is basically this, exactly the same ship as the attacker class for the Royal Navy, with the Bug for the US Navy. Built in the same shipyards as well. So I want, I want some standard cruisers. Don't think I want heavy cruisers like this though. So how much is that? That's 32,000. I think I'll go with two. Two York class heavy cruisers. And Leander. Ajax and Achilles. It's probably isn't a very good idea to spend all of my. Well, I've only got 15,000 left. So I can't even get that right, so I need destroyers. Hopefully I'll be able to earn a bit more, so I'll be renowned pretty quickly. VW, 4,200. <coughs> Where are the Corvettes? It's destroyer. 4,000, that's very expensive for a destroyer. 5,100. Are you kidding me? 5,100. You are joking, are you? Where are the Corvettes? Oh, great, that one doesn't start till 1940. <laughs> well, I've got train class T, uh, T, T type. T or T class. So where's the S class? I've only got one type of submarine for the for the RN. Never mind. Well, I can't find a battleship when it's fifteen thousand. Let's go for the cheapest destroyer they've got. Ah, oh, crikey! I should look through everything, shouldn't I? It's eighteen thousand, twenty-two thousand. I mean. The light cruisers can actually double up on anti submarine warfare as well, but I'd rather have destroyers. Okay, 
4,800 for the A class. Not quite as sort of cable as I eat torpedoes. Uh, they should have depth charges, but for some reason it doesn't actually give you all the information. 4.7 inch. Right, we'll have. How many of those can I have? Oh, I can just have three. Arcatis? No, antelope. Ooh, 1100 left. 1100 left. Which was those submarines? That's only 4000. Oh, and P class. I, we, so I, I need to. Well, I should have looked right through the entire list, I suppose. Never mind. Queensborough. Corvette, but it's not available till 1940, 1st of April. Oh. Well, the Triton is obviously 4,200, so I can't do anything about that. Okay. Next. 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 Oh, I see. So I haven't actually played this game much. So we click on here. And we see BB War Spike, Mod New War Spike, Renown, Repulse, Courageous Exeter, Exeter, Ajax, and the. That's not a very big fleet, but then again, you're only limited to like 10 in, a, in the one battle anyway, so. I'm gonna go for. You know. Okay. Oh, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do now. There's a shipyard there, so that takes me back to the choose when I can choose, you know, choose my next sort of ship, but I haven't got any renown left. Well, oh, there we go. So you click the globe. I've got 11 ships. And you've just gone and done that again, silly me. So what I can gather, what you have to do, Left click and hold down the left mouse button and just move your map around. And you select your ships. Whichever one you have selected, you click on the next blue circle, which is roughly about half a turn, well, it's half a week, 0.5. So that's where this rod, where the Rodney would be. If I clicked it there, click next to get the next turn, it would arrive in this sector. Hmm. So I've got to try to protect with two destroyers this entire huge fleet. Does that seem exactly possible? Don't want to keep them all together. So there's a key down here. So you select it. And that shows you the weather in each sector. And that shows you the amount of merchant traffic the darker the blue the more traffic there is the lighter the harder you know, the lighter the traffic so they're in the Faroe Islands we have shipyards so you have three points of repair, repair and rearm no we don't we've got down here as well now we have the, the mouth of the Suez Canal. We have the shipyard at Gibraltar. We have them across in Canada and New York. Halifax, I believe that is. Why it's let me sort of zoom into the map, will you let me? No, you won't let me, will you? It's just going to show me the... Uh... Okay. So that gives me exactly what this thing's got. Which is something I wasn't actually wanting to take a look at. And I've no idea why it gave me the Rodney when I didn't actually select any ship. Let's see if we can select it and then... No. Oh, I see. So I use these arrows to go through. And there's the experience stars. 
So obviously when the bar's full, you get a star. Next next star fills up once this bar's full again. It's pretty sort of basic. Just see if we can get any information on the steering it's main radar main spot pulse, but there's no there's triple A. But there's no there's no sonar. The sonar on this one, obviously a destroyer. So we're going to have to So we've got three destroyers, not two. You liar. Why is it only showing t Oh I see, right. So you little down the left mouse button and move up and down to move down the list. I've not think of that before. Okay, so I'm going to move to the western approaches. I'm going to pair up battle. I'm going to pair up Rodney. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to pair up War Spite and Renown. Yeah, I think it'll be a good idea. Separate these two out. And have them patrol the Faroe Island Gap. That's what the Denmark Straits there. Which is. Um, should put that back on, shouldn't I? So I can see where my ships are. So we've got War Spite and Renown, but we want some cover for them. So I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them a destroyer. I can't send anything else, I can't buy any more destroyers. I spent too much money renown on heavy warships rather than the uh, smaller ones. But I'm thinking if I come against a submarine, I'll take one destroyer to take it out. I come up against something heavier, destroyers won't be able to take it out. So it's just something like a heavy cruiser or a radar, something like that. A pocket battleship. The Wasp by me now should easily be able to deal with them. Submarines, I don't know. Just outrun them, I suppose. So I'm gonna leave this lump together now. So I've got two destroyers covering the Ajax light cruiser, York, and ex heavy cruisers, the aircraft carrier, and the battleship Rodney, and Repulse, the battle cruiser. So I'm going to get mauled. I like merchants attacked by submarines. 32,000 of the merchant shipping sunk. I can't see where that's actually happened because there's no merchants marked on the map. So I've got a U-boat reported here. Do not actually tell me anything though. Which I'm not surprised. Now I can send, I can basically sell a unit back, but I don't know if I actually lose anything. I don't know if you actually, uh, let's take a look. I can release it from the second. Ajax York, Exeter, Courageous. Get rid of the battleship. I don't need it. Don't actually know. There we go. Release all selected ships from command. Do I get my renown back? If I don't, I just lost a lot of renown. Not just a ship. No, I, I can't risk that. We'll carry on. So I'm going to have them. Okay, so that's light traffic. I'm going to bring them down. No, I don't want to. Never mind. Still getting used to the control. 
I want to bring them down to here into the western approaches. We'll leave these three up here. So I've got War Spike Renown and Acasta. So I've got a battleship, battle cruiser, and a destroyer. Destroyer's gonna have its great cut out if actually those ships encounter U boats. But at least the destroyer won't have its great cut out if it comes up against another enemy sort of heavy warship. So. I definitely need more destroyers. It's only light traffic though. I'm going to move. See, I'm thinking big fleet sort of mentality. If you encounter something big, then you can take it on. If something small, it'll be no problem. Rather than facing something big and not having the ships to actually handle it. Do we have any merchant traffic there? No we don't. So I'll bring these down. Just down to there. Come on. 32,000 tons. Oh, I can't see where they've managed to sink 32,000 tons worth of. Never mind. Let's click next. Quite heavy traffic. We also have traffic here. Not very heavy though. Well, it's light blue. Darkest blue is right there in the western approaches. Yeah. Yes. Uh. There's not much going on right now. And the biggest fleet is actually right here where it's only light traffic. So I'm gonna move them down again. Move them down to there. Still nothing. Thirty two thousand per month, that's weird. Oh, that's like per freight every eight turns or so, so come on. I think I maybe should have left these up there near the in the Straits, Fair Island, Fair Island Gap. Hmm. Come on, something happened. Oh, not like convoy attacked by a submarine. It's Thirty-nine thousand five hundred fifty tons. Where? Oh, I see, right there. The one area where I don't have any warships. But U boats are pretty dangerous to surface ships. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to separate the courageous. Send them back. Oh, no, I'm not. Too valuable. Yeah, I'm going to send the battleship back because there's no point. No 
on the battleship in this fleet anyway. If we're hunting for raiders and things like that, the battleships don't have much use. Come on, where are you? So I've got light traffic down here and heavy traffic up there. That again. So I select all these ships by clicking there and then move them down to there. Oh, I don't think there's going to be much use against U boats though. Allied merchants attacked by warships. Where? Caribbean. Oh, excellent. Let's get some sun, shall we? Alright, let's go. <laughs> by the time I get there, they'll be gone. No. Oh, here we go. Two destroyers. Oh, good grief. Is that all? Two destroyers. Ah, <sighs> okay, let's go. And at last, we enter the battle phase. Oh, I've got two aircraft. Ca oh, Craig, I've got an aircraft, can I? Excellent. Now, destroyers are pretty fast and they can hit quite hard, especially if they launch torpedoes. I just. These models are fantastic, though. The models look really good. And you know, for a naval, oh, there's nothing like. You know, like Titan Fall or anything like that, or you know, only sort of first person shooters or anything like that. But for a naval simulator by, for an indi by an independent company, it's independent then, independent company in Indy, it's you know, pretty damn good looking. They've been, they've been, look, you know, they're, they're taking care to actually do the models really nicely. Why am I looking at them, Pulse? Well, because I sent you the oh, crikey course, I ain't got... Okay, so what you do, instead of go up at these models, I'll explain exactly how to play the game. Okay, first of all, you have direction of the wind. In relation to the camera. Now, wind, depending on the options that you select in the options section, before you actually start your campaign, when can or cannot affect your shells. I've got it on realistic, so it's affecting the shells. Which means, whichever way the wind's blowing, it can either slow your shell down, speed your shell up, turn it left or right, no, basically you just knock it off target. So, first we need to find out exactly where they are. And that's if your spotters actually spotted them yet. So you tap M on the keyboard, or you can just tap this icon down here. So I'm going to tap the icon, and there we see. So it's that same as a campaign map. You left click and hold down the left mouse button, and drag your mouse around. Okay, so... So these destroyers appear to be heading in the opposite, well, almost in the opposite, almost the opposite direction. One contact isn't confirmed. So you can zoom in using the plus, zoom back out using the minus. Center the map on the selected ship. I'm going to touch that. That moves to the next vessel in turn. So if you don't want to sort of start with, like here I've got some repulse selected, if I don't want to start with that, 
I want to prepare my aircraft on the courageous. I can do that. I'm not going to do that, I'm going to do it in sequence. So we need to change our course, but in such a way that we all remain at least in formation. Unfortunately, that's not really a. You can't really do that. The fleet action down here only does. Basically, if, if not, basically, it's easier just to show. Okay, so. We don't want smoke. So let's select none. We want to change our course slightly. We want to bring them all around. But I don't want the repulse to be in the back. You see, each ship, if you, even if you tell the ship to, to control the entire fleet, each ship will turn by 90 degrees. So if I click move now with the fleet order there clicked, all the ships in the fleet will turn that direction, not stay in formation. And that's the problem. There's no way to keep them actually in formation so they all turn and keep the same formation. Which is unfortunate. But we do need to turn the ships around. So the only way to do it is to do individually ship each ship individually. So I'm going to turn. I'm going to put the rudder about 45 degrees. I mean, it's not technically 45 degrees. It's actually 30 degrees. So it's only 15 degrees. But halfway between full full port and midship. I'm going to put it about there. I'm going to bring it down as well. Down to just two thirds. And click move. I don't want to start firing just yet, because obviously they're not sort of, well, they are in range of this ship anyway, but that's not the point. Okay, so you can use your binoculars, which is down here. And you can use left click in this icon to increase the magnification. So there's the target. You can tap the G key. Well, see, there's no target. So basically, the well, foggy is too. Well, I won't say it's exactly foggy. It's not exactly foggy. I wouldn't say it's foggy anyway. But, I'll scan around. We don't want to fire on that one. No, it's not a target. Oh dear. What we can do, we can bring the gun around ourselves. Now, the easiest way to tell which way the wind's actually blowing is here. But visually, you can tell by the way the smoke is actually coming out of the smokestack as well. It's best if you, no instead of just taking notice of what, um, what direction your smoke smoke stack is actually going in? You take notice of what the the direction of the enemy's smoke is moving in. That's the easy way to actually sort of judge where you should have your shells landing. Obviously, I'm, there's no way I can tell right now. Underwater, yeah, underwater effects are quite nice as well. If you've got a U-boat or a submarine, you know. But I don't think it's such a good idea to start firing just yet, but Okay, so left mouse and drag this to alter where your guns are where you're basically where your spotters, where your gunners are training their sights. Compensating for wind as well as direction. There's no target, so I'm just going to guess. No, it depends on what type of gun 
what type of what class of ship it is, and also what type of guns it has. It has, can be different elevations depending on the class and type of gun, obviously. So, I really don't know what to actually. These are um, these are 15 inch. Would be miles out. We'll try it. We'll try a loose shot. That basically means that instead of all of your turrets aiming at the same direction and the same elevation, they'll sort of they'll spread it about a little bit. So basically, your shells are going to hit different parts of that targeted point. Yeah. So we don't have a ship. We don't have a target. Don't have much at all. Now it's basically this is your spotter's information as to where they think your shells have just landed, and they tell you to plus one fifty, plus three hundred. That's yards. It's very rough, and you'll really find even when you have fire control radar lock on, it gives you only an estimated amount. I'll show that anywhere. So we've got our piecing shells. High explosive. I'm gonna go with high explosive. So I'm gonna. That's actually surprisingly not far out. The reason why I chose high explosive was if I got a shot somewhere near to the warship's hull, it could crack the hull. Whereas using armor piercing, you have to actually make a contact to pierce the armor. Destroyers aren't really all that well armoured. Okay, we've got an aircraft carrier now. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn the aircraft carrier in the same way. About, I want the aircraft carrier to be in the in the background. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave that where she is. And I'm going to bring her to a one third. I might even stop her altogether. And obviously instead of guns, a carrier's got aircraft. You have to prepare your aircraft. You have to select which aircraft you want to prepare first. So you can ready a fighter or a bomber. And you can also modify the weapons loadout as well. So I've got eight fighters in the hangar. I've got another eight bombers in the hangar. I was supposed to have 48, but never mind. I suppose that's prepared. So, I won't have torpedo. Do I have bomb? I can have depth charge, which is a bit useless. Or rockets? What to have? What to have? I think I'm going to go with torpedo. No, I'm not. I'm going to go with rocket. Where's rockets? So that's ready. You click lock for some reason. It, it's just it, it says launch, but you're actually launching. You're actually preparing. So there's your aircraft on deck. Well, for a flash, for just a flash of a second, there you just saw some of the aircraft on deck. Have a closer look at that in a second. So I'm gonna turn this ship around. I'm gonna bring it down to two thirds as well. I don't want my ships to hit each other. That's one thing I don't want. So where are? Not quite see where. Oh, there they are. So this obviously this warship's guns are nowhere near as high in caliber. Obviously, so the light of the shells. So the light of the shells and more wind affects them. I choose a deflection angle. And I chose 15 with the uh, repulse. These are. Are they slightly closer? Oh, crikey, sorry about Hmm. Yeah, not much closer. I think we'll go with 15 again. So, we'll go with high explosive shells again. Oh, fire! 
Yeah, there we go. So same deflect, same elevation, same deflection, but nowhere near the target. This is exactly the same class of ship as the one we just was in charge of, so... Need to bring her down to two thirds as well. Bring her around to the same angle. So that looks a bit... No, that's okay. So this time we're going to learn our lesson and... Bring this around. So I can't really tell. It's a little bit further away as well. It must be 15 degrees. I'm going to choose about. It wasn't too far away. So if I choose about 19 degrees on elevation, high explosive shells again, and then fire. <laughs> enough and deflection no oh. how on earth did that happen deflection was a lot greater than it should have been so if the wind didn't affect the shells as much yeah, I can tell because the angle so the wind's actually coming slightly towards us yeah so it's not exactly blowing from right to left Okay, this is the Ajax. I think what we'll do, I'll split. I'll have the light cruisers go off in that direction. I'll have the heavies go that direction. Come on, I'm sure they must have a target by now. Nope, no target. There we go. So now we're locked on. So that's a fire control radar. So you have to left click on the target itself. Which at this distance is easier said than done. Okay, so as I said, up here we've got the name, speed, that's not 22,138 tons is it, it's a, that's a heck of a big destroyer if it is, so out of 27 that's just doing 22.13, 138, yeah, 138, elevation for the gun is 30 degrees, torpedo deflection is 314.5, that's if you wanted to actually launch torpedoes, you can cycle through your weapons by left clicking on this. So you got torpedoes or none. Which way if you click no it means you don't want to fire that turn, so you skip that turn. I'm we'll going high explosive rounds again. So elevation is 30 degrees. I can't see. I'm needing too much deflection. I didn't get why our shells landing over here when the wind's going in that direction. I don't get that. 30 degree elevation. Well, as I said before, this is just this is, these are just estimated figures. So I'm gonna go with exactly what it says. So we've got high explosive shells. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, that's a little bit closer. It's not exactly that wrong. I can click on it somewhere. There we go. Okay, so we're going to come around exactly the same way as the Ajax did. 
This is just a destroyer though. So I'm going to bring her down to two thirds. Obviously the bigger the ship, the more sort of effort is to turn it. So the slower the turn circle is. I'm not going to fire. I'm not going to fire charges here, that would be pretty useless. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with the Codrington. Same class of destroyer. Down to two thirds. I'm not going to fire here either. Now it's the enemy turn. So they have to choose not to fire either. Unusual. What's the AI playing at? Okay, so we've started to repulse turning. Like I said, if I'd have selected this, it would have turned them all. I want to keep them in a particular sort of formation. It's pretty difficult to do. What I'll do is I'll allow this to turn. These will remain straight and slow them down. <clears throat> okay, so I'll carry on turning the pulse. A little bit harder this time. to full speed again. It's just so I can keep repulse ahead of these other the cruisers. But also as they turn, I keep repulse over here while the lighter ships head off in the other direction. Because repulse isn't gonna be much use. But I'll keep repulsed back. One of the two destroyers, I'm gonna try and get two destroyers and maybe one of the light cruisers to go back to guard the courageous. So let's use the aircraft to take these destroyers out. It's less risky than losing an entire you know, battleship or battle cruiser. Let's see if I can. Can we see the other one yet? Yeah, we can. So I've got the second one. I'm going to leave the first, the leading destroyer, to the other ships. I'm going to see if I can lock. There we go. So now I'm going to start firing at this second destroyer with the repulse main armament. She has secondary armament as well, which you can select as well down here. 4.5 inch armor piece and high explosive, but obviously can't use four and a half inch at this range. So I'm gonna deflect. 23 points is that Richard Bateson. DD Z4. The elevation is 22.4 degrees. It's not far off that right now. 20 degrees, 22, 23. So about halfway between 22 and 20, 23. Not 22, that's 22. What am I talking about? I can't count. 1, 2, half between 22 and 23 degrees. Keep on high explosive, and I only just need two. Sort the deflection angle out. That's best guess anyway. Thought that's gonna be anywhere near. Not far off though. Not bad. Okay, now we come to launching the aircraft carrier. Launching the aircraft carrier. 
Launching the aircraft from the aircraft carrier. Okay, so I'm going to bomber. Fuck it. There goes your aircraft. Well, the aircraft should be available next turn. Uh, that's a little bit different from the actual turn base. It's, it's like a, I suppose you could call it a mini game. And you have to space, you have to wait until your aircraft di dive, and then you press space bar to launch your rocket. It's the same with the bombs and everything else. It's pretty simple to do. It's not too simple to solve. It's not exactly easy to solve hitting the target though. So I'm gonna slow these down. So that one third, now I'm gonna straight leave them as they are. Oh they'll be pulse to turn round. Actually no, I'm not gonna turn them moving fell, I'm not talking about. I want these to turn harder to get up in that direction. I'm not talking about. <coughs> oh, why have I broken contact with the Which one's that? That's the first one. I hope it's the first one. Is it the first one? Yeah, it's the first one. Okay, so... So that was a little bit short. A little, quite a lot short. We tried the other one at 19, it still was short. So try these. It says 23.3 degrees there. So that's 21, 22, 23. We'll go with 24 because the last time it told me 23 point something, it was about a degree short. I would think I'm, I'm the best guess anyway. Ooh, that's nearly air. Oh. Oh. So if I'd have done it in what the bit what the red out fire control was telling me to do, I'd have hit it. It'll teach me to ignore. Okay, that's about twenty eight point one degrees. Didn't think it was all that much further away, but never mind. Going down to one third and hard to put on the rudder. Dot hit it. Slight deflection. That was that was very close. So deflection elevation is now twenty nine point nine. I'm going twenty nine somewhere between twenty nine and thirty degrees. Going tight, so the tattoo is going to be aiming roughly in the same direction. Roughly, hopefully, exactly in the same direction, the same elevation. Don't stagger the shots. So that's fine. Come on. Oh, this is got more. No, that's even further out. Yeah, I followed the email down exactly this time. Never mind. Light cruiser Ajax. Bring her down to about a third as well. So she's making turns for one third. Ooh, that's lit up 29.9. Twenty nine point nine. Almost exactly twenty nine. Can't do it point nine, but I don't know if that'll be enough. Probably won't be.
Oof, not far off though. Let's turn again, come back to one third. You see what I mean about the turning circle? This track can turn in a lot shorter time. Nope, over the fire. And exactly the same, hard to port and down to one third. Destroys you a lot faster than the other ships in the fleet. Nope, we don't want to do anything nice to turn. These may fire. There we go. Miles out. Never mind. Oh, it's actually far out. No, got miles out though. So, down to one third as well. Don't want to charge. So, green light again on the radar fire control, 22.6 degrees elevation. But what's the deflection I need? I can't really tell now because there's no. I can tell my own ships, but I can't tell one of theirs. Yes, I can. Still quite a lot of deflection needed. Are they coming straight for me? Good grief, you're brave. Until it destroys against a, a flotilla like this. Cool. 